Hey there, my name is Jackson Witzel and I will be talking to you today about stop motion animation. I will be going over the general history of the medium as a whole, as well as arguing my position on why it is still a relevant and important animation style in film today. This being because it is developed into its own unique style that can't go away despite the advancements of CGI. Now let's dive into the world of stop motion animation. Let's get started. First off, what is stop motion animation? For those of you who don't know, stop motion animation can be defined as animation that is captured one frame at a time with physical objects that are moved between frames. When you play back the sequence of images rapidly, it creates the illusion of movement. While this definition technically could apply to all forms of animation, as they are all just moving images in a sequence, stop motion is different because it generally involves taking a picture of each individual frame. However, it really isn't quite that simple as the process will require a lighting system, image capture system, and a video processing system. The camera will be required to shoot the illuminated object in order to digitally record the images of it. The object, usually a puppet or made out of clay, must be slightly adjusted in between each shot so that the frames will be captured in a sequence that displays proper movement of said object. This ultimately results in a time-consuming process that if not done properly can be extremely difficult and might have to be redone. However, if done right, the object will coherently move in a sequence, giving off the illusion of movement. If not done right, you just spent three months trying to get a fox to ride a motorcycle and might want to rethink your life. Now before I talk about where stop motion animation is today, it is important for me to inform you on the history of stop motion as well as its origins. It has been found that stop motion had its origins in Europe, being a technique used to move inanimate objects, a good example being George Millier's a Trip to the Moon in 1902. It was in the early 1900s that French filmmaker Emile Cole brought stop motion animation over to America with his film Phantasmagore. Phantasmagore. Something like that. In 1908. Today the short is known as the very first fully animated film, being revolutionary for its time. Inspired by this, Edwin S. Porter created the first stop motion short that was not like a cartoon, but used actual objects. This was simply known as the teddy bears, being a short that lasted around two minutes that took over 50 hours to animate in total. The next well-known stop motion short was Willis O'Brien's The Lost World in 1925, which included a total of 49 prehistoric animals animated through stop motion. Due to the process being so time consuming, the short format for stop motion remained fairly prominent throughout the 20th century. This made it a perfect style to use for children's shows, most famously Gumby, as well as the Rankin slash Bass Productions television Christmas specials that came out in the 60s and 70s, such as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Most famous for their stop motion shorts was a small company created in the 70s called Ardman Animation that remained relatively unknown until 1986 when they made Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer music video. Ardman, led by Nick Park, went on to create a short that became its own TV series called Creature Comforts, and more famously, the Wallace and Gromit shorts. The shorts won Park many Oscars and British Academy Awards in the 1990s, causing him to eventually produce two feature-length stop-motion films in the early 2000s, Chicken Run and Wallace and Gromit Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Despite both films' immense success, this was not the first time that stop-motion projects got their very own feature. Despite the fact that it was less common throughout the early 20th century as it is now, there were still several feature lengths that did come out. The first to ever come out was the Russian film The New Gulliver, which came out in 1935. The film mixed live-action actors with an entire world of stop-motion animated characters. The first feature that was 100% stop-motion came out two years later, in 1937, called The Tale of the Fox, created by Polish animator Wladyslaw Sterowicz something like that, who had completed the film seven years prior, but was unable to get it shown in theaters until then. It wasn't until the early 1990s that the idea of doing an American blockbuster animated feature done entirely with stop motion came about through filmmaking legend Tim Burton, partnered with Disney animator Henry Selick to create the 1993 success The Nightmare Before Christmas. This film made stop motion a popular medium of animation and filmmaking resulting in many more stop-motion productions to come from this duo, including The Corpse Bride, 
James and the Giant Peach, Coraline, and more. Despite stop motion gaining popularity in the animated feature department in recent years, it is no longer mixed with live action as it used to be, as it was once the best form of special effect. This originally started thanks to Willis O'Brien's stop motion effect used for King Kong in 1933. This lived on through his protege, Ray Harryhausen, who invented the idea of Dynamation, which split live action footage into foreground and background shots to line up properly with the stop motion effects. Harryhausen went on to do the special effects for many other huge films over the years, including Jason and the Argonauts and Clash of the Titans. In fact, you can see many uses of stop motion animation used for special effects up until the early 90s, including Raiders of the Lost Ark and Terminator. At this point, you might be asking yourself, why don't we see stop motion used nearly as often nowadays as we used to? After all, it was once the best way for people to be able to watch three-dimensional animation. What happened? Well, I can answer that in three letters. CGI. When CGI came out in the early 90s, people and filmmakers were blown away with what it could do. Due to this outbreak in new special effects technology, stop motion was downgraded a lot, especially with the emergence of Pixar and DreamWorks. But listen, just because of the CGI, CGI isn't a bad thing. Granted, it can be completely overused at times. Okay, way too overused sometimes. But I'll admit it, it actually is faster, more efficient way to animate. Because it's faster, it's a more popular way of animating. And it works really well at being more detailed and advanced. Something stop motion is just unable to do as well. Despite this though, stop motion animation has still strived in recent years. This because it has developed from being just an effect in movies to a completely unique style of movies. This wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the fact that many people really love stop motion animation. There's just something about it that people connect to. Yes, we all realize it doesn't look realistic, but there's something there that makes it feel more real to us. The fact that what we're looking at is real. No amount of typing on a computer screen can replicate the real hard physical labor that goes into creating the puppets or clay figures and the sets that are built. Some people just genuinely respect the effort that goes into the creation process. That's why people still enjoy watching them. The style has developed extraordinarily well because what is happening in front of the camera is actually happening in front of the camera. In computer generated films, there's no camera, just the illusion of one. The fact that stop motion is able to continue to do its own thing year in year out, straying away from the trends, shows us that it is a respected art form that has lasted the test of time and is here to stay.